Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max lovers, in today's episode we're going to talk about real world map size and why is it important to use a real world map size. In this case we have uh, two cubes as you can see, they are both the same size but one of them has a real world map size uh, modifier a UV mapping with a real world map size and the other one has a normal UV mapping on the box. If you look at both of them, they are looking actually the same. So the texture is uh, following the uh, planes of the cubes exactly in the same way. But what are you going to do when you have a shape like this? Well, if you want to find out how to map and use a UV mapping for this kind of shapes, uh, which are this kind of snake, star snake, I'll call it. Please stay tuned and let's dive into it. And I will explain you everything. So as you can see here, we have the two cubes that uh, we talked earlier about it. And uh, normally what you do, you create a shape and then you apply an UV mapping on it. And after that, you say what kind of shape it is, the planner is a cylindrical or uh, it's a box in this case. And then you tell the program the size of the shape, which in this case was, and this is the size of the map that I'm using here. So if I'm open, opening the material slots, here I created two materials. Uh, one has a map that it's using use real world scale and the other one it's using tiles. So it's one tile by one tile, which is exactly this image. So one tile by one tile, it means that you, we have an image that is like this and the second one is gonna be another tile on the left side, up, top, down and so on. From where all these tiles are coming, so to uh, show you that I need to do a quickly on unwrap. And in the moment that I'm doing this, uh, open UV editor, this is one tile. As you can see here, this is when you see uh, one by one tiles. It's actually, it's, uh, the program is understanding that this is one tile. So as you can see here, the program it already did the UV mapping. So what's happened, what is he doing? He's putting the my tile. I need to... scale this to have it like this. So now I have almost one tile on the program. So this is what he did. He just generated the UV mapping that I had before is not working anymore. So yeah, this is, this is what one tile means in the slot material. So every time you see here one tile by one tile, it means that the program is understanding that a tile, this image is actually one tile. But in the moment that I'm using use real world scale that I already made here, but I'm just gonna, so for this project, I used the one of the Corona bitmap materials that are coming directly with the program. You can find them here in the Corona materials assets and called, well, it's this one. So if you load this one, you're gonna have exactly the same uh, image uh, as I have here. If I double click on this and I scale it, as you can see, it's exactly the same. It's coming with one tile by one tile. But if I use a real world map size, I need to go to customize unit setup to see what kind of units I'm using. So display unit is in metric and my system unit is the millimeters. So it's millimeters with millimeters. So this means that I need to tell to the program in the moment that I'm adding my uh, bitmap. So I'm just gonna change on this one. So in the moment that I'm using my, uh, I need to tell to the program that I wanna use, use real world scale. And in that moment, I need to tell the size of my image. So in this, the size of this image is uh, 1.7 meters by 1.8 meters. As you can see, they're looking kind of the same. So now I just need to apply this material, which had tiling before, to my cube. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete the UV mapping that I had before. And here I'm just going to check this box, real world map size. And in this moment, the program understand that I'm using real world uh, map sc scales. So for example, if I go now and I create a sphere, for example, creating a sphere here, that it's uh, this size, I can just go here and tell the, the program that I need, a, I wanna have the real world map size and I can apply this texture. And right now, the size of this texture here, it's exactly the same on the sphere. If I create something else like a cylinder or a torus, for example, it's more complicated. 
shape. Well, it's not really that complicated. And I apply again my material on it. It's exactly the same size. But if you have a teapot, for example, and you go to the teapot and you say real world map size and you apply the material that we made now we have the texture on it on the same size as my initial cube uh, this is quite important because as you can see here on the teapot the texture is actually following the teapot the teapot shape yeah everywhere also here see also here so this is quite an important thing to to know because in the moment that you have a crazy shape like the star that we had before like this one and you want to apply a, a UV mapping to this you don't have an UV mapping here that is matching the shape of this object so what you're going to do because this shape is made with a sweep and my sweep has a real world map side and I can just tell him also to generate mapping coordinates in the moment that I'm applying the the shape to it the my texture is following actually the shape of uh, this star snake, I'll call it, as you can see here. But because the shape, it doesn't have enough polygons to make everything smooth, but I can correct all of that, the interpolation. So I can add more, in, I can interpolate more. And now, as you can see, it's smoothly following, the texture is smoothly following the shape that I have here. Even here where uh, things are getting crazy with the shape, it's still trying to it's still following actually the the shape i can correct all of this corner by making smooth maybe but as you can see this texture now it's following really really nice the shape of uh, of this snake so this is why it's important to to work with um, real world map size because in this way you always you you don't need to apply uvv maps to the uh, to the shapes anymore i mean if you create a, a new box for example and uh, i don't know the box it's as big as you want you don't need to think about uv mapping anymore because you can just go here and say uh uv uvv map and just go here to the real world map size on the box of course because it's a box and then you apply the material to it and the material is already applying directly to the box if you want to move the uh, texture on it you can just go and just move it so that's is not a problem but the size you can't change the size as you can see they are all closed the length the width and the height you can't change the size from here you can change it only from the uh, material slot as you can see here so only from here you can change the size of the of the texture also if you want to always work with the real world map size so you go to customize preferences on general and you say texture coordinate use real world texture coordinate and you click ok and each time you creating a new shape it's going to come directly with a real world map size so you just click to generate mapping coordinates in this case or you just apply a uv mapping to to this as a box in this case and you apply the material over so is that easy but for example if i'm having a, a crazy shape yeah i'm just going to create everything i'm going to create a table a round table actually it's more like a, an elliptical so i'm going to use an ellipse i'm going to make this thing 50 by 2055 and i'm just going to make a copy of one of these copy and I'm gonna use one to just to extrude and I'm gonna extrude it to 35 millimeters I'm gonna generate and the other one well I don't like the number of shapes that I have so I'm just gonna use here on an interpolation is 32 I'm just gonna click also on the other one and use 32 and on this one I'm just gonna add a sweep gonna go on top and to this sweep I'm just gonna use half round and I'm gonna have it on the corner 
I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees, 270, and to this I'm gonna high 17. And uh, for example, I need a wood texture. I'm just gonna create one like really fast. I'm just gonna bring here another a texture from the, for example, this one, a wood texture. And I'm just gonna apply this texture to a corona material, physical material. And let's see the texture. I'm gonna use a real world scale, a view image. And yeah, it's a square, I think. And I'm just gonna say that it's let's say five meters by five meters i'm just gonna guess so 500 5000 by 5000 and now i'm just gonna apply this material to my table as you can see and now because i created this edge uh, with a sweep that has real world map scale i can apply this and now as you can see the texture is following the shape yeah this is super important because normally on the middle ellipse you can just apply an uvv mapping but on the other one there is no actually uvv mapping that you can apply because this shape this goes in three direction so it's rotate it's revolving around the table and it's also round so this is why it's important to use a uh, real world map scale in this way you will never have any problems in uh, mapping any any shape so if you found this uh, tutorial useful please don't forget to subscribe to my channel or share the video with your friends if you think it was helpful for you and uh, see you in the next one bye